go to the next speaker. <coughs> so the uh, next speaker is uh, Ze'ev Porat uh, from a Nuclear Research Center. And he will speak about small metal sphere formation by ultrasonic cavitation. I would like to present a new uh, method of formation of uh, metallic micro and nano uh, mic uh, spheres by ultrasonic energy. We dedicate this talk to our dear uh, colleague and mentor, Professor Shimon Reich of the Weizmann Institute of Science, <coughs> who passed away recently, and welcome his family who is sitting in the audience. Shimon was the kind of a person was born to be a scientist. His enormous wisdom, original way of thinking, his vast knowledge in many fields made him an outstanding scientist with whom we were privileged and honored to work. His prominent contribution to science was mainly in two fields. One is physics of polymers, and the other one is magnetic properties of materials and superconductivity. In this field, Okay. In this field, <clears throat> he concentrated during the last several, several years on the superconductivity of lead and its applications, such as dating ancient uh, lead artifacts. He also predicted that microspheres of lead should spin under uh, an external uh, magnetic field when cooled down below the critical a temperature of superconductivity. In order to do that, we needed uh, small spheres of lead. He built a device to do it, but he didn't live to perform the experiment. However, he lived to see the results that I'm going to show today. <clears throat> the first choice was to use commercial glass beads that would be coated uh, by evaporated lead. As you can see from these micrographs, uh, this idea was not very successful because of imperfect coating or shadowing effects. Therefore, we tried another route, and the idea was the following. There are several metal, metals of rather low melting point, lower than the boiling point of silicon oil. Therefore, insertion of a chunk of such a metal into a test tube that contains silicon oil and heating up the system causes the creation of two uh, <clears throat> molten phases which are immiscible. Now, irradiation this system with ultrasonic energy causes dispersion of the molten metal into numerous uh, microspheres. <clears throat> uh, this is a what happened to the mouse? Uh, this is a schematic drawing of the system. This is how we did it actually with the uh, just a portable uh, 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 flame for, for coffee making. It is done in a hood. Uh, this is the structure of the silicon oil, and you can see that it has a good thermal stability up to 300 degrees at least, and even more. Uh, these are the lead microspheres that we got. As you can see, they are rather uniform in size and in shape, a few ten tens of uh, microns. A closer look at them shows that they surface is not very smooth. You can see all kinds of, of features on the surface, as well as some craters like here and here that are caused by very energetic collisions under the uh, turbulence of the uh, uh, supersonic or radiation. We did it with other five metals, like indium. And you can see here we got also spheres. This is not a picture of a water molecule, but rather three spheres of indium which are adjacent to each other. Uh, again, we saw it with zinc, uh, tin, bismuth, and gallium. With gallium, which has an extremely low melting point, you can see that it starts to melt already under the beam of the electron microscope. 
some of the pictures might remind people of planets, although this, this, this line is not the equator, just, just the A to measure the uh, diameter of this sphere. The next stage was to check whether it works not only on pure metals, but also on eutectic alloys, which would have uh, low enough melting temperatures. Surprisingly, we found out that there are only two, and they are both alloys of gold. The first one that you checked was uh, gold germanium. This is the phase diagram, and you can see that the lowest melting point is 361 degrees, which is sufficiently low. <clears throat> These are micrographs of two of the spheres that we got, and as you can see, there are several interesting features. For example, in these two, they have a pole morphology. If you, if you look at the arrows that I drew here, there are lines that are uh, going from here to all other directions. Second, you see uh, that there are some bright spots and dark spots. Dark spots are the geranium, where the bright ones are the uh, gold. That means there is a phase segregation on the surface. On this one, we got a bright stripe, which is gold only, as you'll see immediately. Doing EDS analysis uh, on the surface shows that anywhere else out of this stripe, we see uh, some enrichment of, this, of the germanium versus its eutectic composition. And the gold uh, concentration is lower. However, if we concentrate on this stripe, you see enormous enrichment of gold almost pure gold. An even more interesting system is the uh, gold silicon eutectic. Again, this is the uh, phase diagram. It has almost identical uh, melting point at the eutectic composition, um, <clears throat> which uh, takes less silicon here than in the other case. This system is more uh, uh, I would say we saw many more types of uh, spheres. You see that this is a more typical one. You can see very well the phase segregation, whereas this looks like more a, a chocolate ball but made of gold. Here there's a big area which is purely silicon, and this, here you see this patch, which is mainly gold. Uh, due to the lower uh, surface tension of silicon, sometimes we see kind of a pool of silicon with some islands of gold in it. Uh, probably under the very energetic collisions, one of them has cleaved in a very funny way. <clears throat> we also saw in some of them a kind of a skin formation where underneath there is a kind of structures and cracks, and this is a different, uh, these are other different uh, types of cracks. Sometimes we saw these wrinkles, and you see very well here the uh, phase segregation between the silicon and the gold. As I said, sometimes it reminds you of other worlds, so when I saw this picture under the microscope, I felt that I have seen this before. This was taken at the Helicon microscope at the Weizmann Institute, whereas this picture is taken by a space telescope of NASA. They look rather, pretty much the same. Again, uh, examining the surface uh, composition by EDS shows that concentrating on this dark spot gives, again, a pronounced enrichment of silicon, almost 80 percent, whereas its uh, eutectic composition is only 18. Whereas taking this analysis somewhere else, but still on the surface, shows a different com uh, ratio between these two elements. Another phenomenon that we have seen is fusion of these uh, uh, microspheres. We've seen it mainly here with the gold uh, silicon eutectics. Sometimes two of them are, from, are fused together, forming this kind of a neck. Sometimes we have uh, multiple fusion. Uh, it was, we found in, in the literature that uh, the local temperature that might be developed uh, under such collision is, is several uh, thousands of degrees, and the cooling rate is also extremely fast. <clears throat> Since we see phase segregation, and the dark spots are mainly silicon, so we thought that if we immerse this, uh, these uh, microspheres in hydrofluoric acid for a prolonged time, uh, the silicon would be dissolved. And indeed, that, indeed, that's what we saw. So immersing it for, I think, a week showed a complete removal of the uh, silicon, leaving a grooved surface uh, 
with an uh, enormous uh, surface area. A closer look at this uh, surface show these cavities that were formed by etching or the solution of the silicon. Some of them are, this, this uh, scale bar is 200 nanometers. These must be a few tens of nanometers. <clears throat> this is, again, again, another sphere that has been uh, treated with HF, and you can see other structures. The diversity of structures, surface structures, that we see with gold silicon is enormous. Uh, taking the uh, extra D analysis of these spheres shows that before treating with HF and other, uh, after treating with HF gives essentially the same uh, extra D pattern. Although we know for sure that before we had the silicon on the surface, you can see from the angles here that they all correspond to the gold only. That means that the immediate conclusion is while the gold uh, is in the crystalline form, the silicon must be amorphous uh, before we have dissolved it. <clears throat> Another phenomenon that we saw with the gold uh, in some of the experiments, that after the, all the um, micro uh, spheres have precipitated, either by themselves or by centrifugation, uh, in some cases, we saw that the uh, oil phase remained clear but colored. And this color indicates that there are some colloidal uh, part particles in it. This is a colloidal suspension. The <clears throat> separating these particles and examining them by TEM shows also all kinds of, of particles. Some of them have a file fold symmetry. Uh, examining the same ones by high resolution TEM shows even the crystal lattice in these particles. Uh, we recall that we've seen it somewhere else. In nine, in, uh, nine years ago, a similar picture has been uh, published, and the conclusion uh, of, this of this paper was that um, from molecular dynamic calculation, such structure should be in this form of the truncated icosahedral uh, structure, and this is an equilibrium state. That means uh, this is the most stable form of, of these particles. However, in this paper, uh, the nanoparticles were produced by biomass. And so alfalfa uh, plants uh, are able to concentrate gold ions and reduce them, and, and these are growing slowly. Uh, if you saw similar pictures, we can conclude that this happens also under the short uh, time scale of our experiment, probably due to the uh, high temperature of the system. Also, EDS of these uh, nanoparticles shows that they are mainly gold. Um, examining the crystal lattice of these uh, nanoparticles allows us to first we get, we get a perfect single crystal pattern of electron diffraction and we can measure the these spacings within these lattice. In summary, we show here that metals and alloys, alloys of low melting point uh, can, can be dispersed into microspheres and nanospheres under ultrasonic uh, energy. Uh, it is also do, uh, possible to do it with eutectic gold, silicon, and gold germanium, where you see phase segregation and surface enrichment of the lighter elements. <coughs> uh, with eutectic gold silicon, uh, we got also, we saw that the gold is crystalline, whereas the silicon is amorphous. Uh, we saw some phenomena of fusion, and we got also nanocrystals from these particles. Uh, what I would like to say is that we started with a way, uh, we, we looked for a way to produce some uh, lead microspheres for a certain experiment. We, did, we ended up with, another, with a new method of producing uh, these microspheres, and it led us to very interesting uh, um, <clears throat> finding about uh, the gold nanospheres and microspheres of enormous surface area and the single crystal structure. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Zev. Uh, any questions? So I, I would like to ask one. Um, what, what are the prospects of, I don't know, making composite materials of, of something like that and having, I, I can hear you. having special properties of, of such a composite made of, of just sintering those fields together. Put the microphone closer to you. Oh. Sorry. Uh, what, what are the prospects of uh, making composite materials that are made of these spheres 
in terms of the expected properties, or do, do you envision something like that? We haven't gone any further than this stage. It is possible, maybe. We tried it also, also with polymers, because they can also, uh, you can get the molten phase, which is immiscible in the oil, but uh, due to the poor uh, thermal conductivity of, uh, of the polymers, we, they mainly burned, so to say. Uh, we haven't tried anything else than this, but, uh, you know, uh, we are open to suggestions and uh, cooperations if somebody is interested. <coughs> Probably yes, otherwise we would have found it. How much? Seven. 570, well, we have to find another oil which boils at a higher temperature. Or any other liquid which will form an immiscible, uh, uh, would it? yes. Maybe yes, yes. But again, this, uh, this is a rather new subject and maybe we can uh, try it with other systems. Okay, thank you. We have to go on, so thank you again, Zev.